Good day everyone! Today we'll be talking about the story The Trap by Kirima Tubuten. But before we dig in, we have to know about first the short background of the author. So, who is Kirima Pulutan? So, Kirima Pulutan is a Filipino writer, an atheist, and a journalist. Some of her stories was written under the, the pseudonym Patricia S. Torres. She was born in Hulusulu on December 16, 1925. The background of the story is that the author mentioned the town of Kabuyao, which is now the city of Kabuyao, which Naasha located sa um, province of Laguna. So, the city of Kabuyao is known for its rich history and cultural heritage. We can infer that the story takes place during the time where modernization is nowhere to be found because magbasta sa kiingon sa narrator the swinging bamboo bridge and the use of an outhouse which means wala modernization at the time so let's move on to the vocabulary words of the story um there are a lot of new words na atong mabasa sa story but we only include six vocabulary words. So first, we have unfazed. Unfazed means not surprised or worried. Tapos number two is dodge. Having or showing tenacity and grim persistence. The brink of something. A situation where you are almost in a new situation, usually a bad one. Spinster. An unmarried woman, typically an older woman beyond the usual age of a marriage. Precipice, a very steep cliff on a mountain. Sawali is a type of traditional woven split bamboo mats used as walls. Labyrinths, a maze-like network of tunnels, chambers, or paths, either natural or artificial. Weeding, remove unwanted plants from from an area of ground. So at this moment, we are going to tackle about the plot summary of the story, The Trap by Kirima Pulutan. So um, I'm going to tell you about the plot summary, which is the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and then the resolution or the ending of the story. So um, for the exposition, the narrator, Elisa, a 14-year-old girl, moves with her family to a new town called Kabuya. She feels a sense of urgency to arrive before dark, hoping someone will see them. She left behind a dear friend named Salud in their previous town of Tayo. So in this, um, in this um, exposition, in, um, in this paragraph, um, the narrator, Elisa, is um, with her family. Um, they moved to a new town called Kabuya from, I mean, they are from Tayo. And then she left a dear friend, which is Salud. And then for the rising action, the narrator feels a sense of change within herself and confides in Salud about her worries. Salud teases her about growing brisk and the four-year age gap between them. The narrator's departure from Tayo is painful, and she resents Salud for not showing her emotions. In Kabuyao, Elisa describes their new house near the church with a swinging bridge there, um, and then... Uh, Leading to the outdoor toilet, she writes a letter to Salud, who corresponds with gentle mockery. So in this passage, um, I don't, um, I somehow relate to um, to Elisa because before I um, I shared also sa kwaang friend or sa kwaig agaw na kanang na ay na ay something na hitabos sa konsaf and then um, she um, kanang mahilukon bitaw ko niya lolo unsa na pasin sakit na ano bitaw like but i kanang ignorante bitaw kasi imong kuan like wala ka kabalo kun sino tabo kun si kuan na pa, pasulod na dai ka sa teenage life like that like manamukol na ka or something ana but yeah and then she explained here also that uh, i mean she described also their house in here na na adaw dool sa lang balay i mean na adaw sa dool sa church ang ilang balay and then pagawas kay na ang ang bago bridge o ang toilet toilet i mean yeah, and then for the climax, Elisa starts attending school and develops an infatuation with her teacher, Mr. Gabriel. She becomes nervous and clumsy in his presence but keeps her feelings a secret. 
one day she accidentally cuts her leg while gardening and Mr. Gabriel tends to her wound. The narrator realizes her growing love for him. Um, for this one, um, I don't think no, no, see, Elisa na not experience any, but because um, we all have crushes before, I know that you know, na tayo mga crush before, and like, kanang paghanga, paghanga sa usa katawo, like, na gusto na something sa iya as iyang batasan, siyang kagwapo, like that, and then, and like, makulbaan ka, makulbaan ka, or mag, mag, gusto ba ka magpaduding or something, and uh, I know na dili si Elisa na naka feel any, but. I think um, it's almost everyone that experienced good ani. And then for the following action, when Elisa falls ill in February that year, her friend Leonor visits and leaves a note. The narrator, in her feverish state, confesses her love for Mr. Gabriel in the response. I mean, in her response, the note gets passed down around, passed around, and Miss Ramos, the principal, confronts the narrator, accusing her. Of involving Mr. Go Mr. Gabriel in a gossip, and that could cause him his job. Karon mapan siguro na generation like in unforbidden love mapan siguro pan siguro ng kan student teacher relationship like it's it's so unprofessional of the teacher if she will if he or she will make patol sa estudyante niya or kanang mag mo agree ba siya or mo hatag ba siya consent na magpa mag magki relationship sa usa ka estudyante. I don't think na um okay na karon but most of the time, most of the most of the stories na akong na hear, it's either they will break up or magpadayin kisila. And then in this um in this passage, dili na story ni ni Kerry Mapulitan um Mr. Gabriel um iyang give Jack ang heart ang love ni 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 Elisa. So the narrator accepts suspension and runs home in a panic. In her distress, she goes to Mr. Gabriel's room in the dark, confesses her love, and breaks down in tears. Mr. Gabriel comforts her and tells her to go home. So, daily, daily pa lang na tells her to go home. Like, pakita gina walay pag asa si Elisa na morag mag must level up in a relationship. The resolution of the story or the ending, it is the story ends with the sound of the wind symbolizing the narrator's despair as she runs back home. We will move on to the characters of the story. So, the characters of the story is Elisa, Elisa's mother, Elisa's father, and Salud, and. Mr. Gabriel, Miss Ramos, and then Leonor. And then um, Elisa is a 14-year-old girl who's experiencing uh, physical changes in her body because of puberty. And then Elisa's father. Elisa's father is mentioned in the story, particularly during their move to Kabuya. And then Elisa's mother. Elisa's mother is mentioned briefly in the story, primarily, primarily during the departure from their previous town. And then Salud. Elisa's best friend, who is 18 years old, and whom she keep in touch even though they moved to Kabuya. So, and then Miss Ramos, an unfriendly elderly spinster, and the principal in the school in which Elisa is transferred. And also Mr. Gabriel, a small and thin and stooped man, the teacher and advisor of Elisa. And then lastly, Leonor, a friend of Elisa's who visits her when she falls ill. Leonor um, inadvertently becomes part of the gossip surrounding Elisa's feelings for Mr. Gabriel. So, we see Leonor and Ag tag sa letter na nagpasa-pasa sa tibuok silahan. And then the setting of the story is, it happened in the town of Kabuyao. The theme of the story is teenagers who are in their adolescent stage experience physical changes as well as their feelings which causes them confusion. Di ba mo na itong makita sa story na ay confusion sa iyang puan, sa iyang heart, if, if that's, uh, that is love. But the I that is infatuation na irang na feel sa in teacher because kita ng good na mga I mean uh, during our teenage um, teenager na phase is that kanang if pakita anta o kanang care and attention we feel that that is love but now that we are adult young adults kai na realize nato na I it's a form of caring. Mm -mm. Anak lang, dili na siya ka na mag, ka na more than a platonic love, okay? So, next one is the style. The style that the author used in her writing. So, naayid duha, kabuok na yung gigamit, which is, ang number one is ang narration, which is very clear, di ba? Makita na to na, the author is really narrating. Though, nagpaan lang siya, paasit na siya si Eliza. 
And then, the second one is the descriptive. So, we can see man go, diba? Sa ihang kwan kay the kanta, yung siyang literary devices. So, makita na to na, na ay description nga nahitabo. So, hindi siya describe. So, the next one is the mga literary devices that we can see in the story. So, what are these literary devices na makita na to sa story? So, first one, we have hyperbole, as you can see, na ay mga exaggeration that to si Elisa kaya tamod sa na feel, right? Tapos na ay foreshadowing. Ang foreshadowing niya is katong naka-dream siya. Diba? Na marag na something daw na kuan nitabu na to sa ihang dream. And na ay simile, na ay imagery, which is ang imagery daw daghan kaayo, diba? And then, metaphor, and then symbols. Daghan kaayo symbols na to. And, okay, class, classmates, I want you to comment down sa um, comment box which part of the story makita ni mo ang hyperbole, ang metaphor, and etc. Okay? Uh, please provide one lang. One na literary devices and indicate kung ano siya nga literary device and the statement. Okay? We will move on to uh, the symbolisms we found in the story. So, we found the symbolism um, darkness, light, Salute, Green Breeze, Bamboo Bridge, uh, Mr. Gabriel, Eliza's Wand, Wind. Yeah, that's all. And then for the darkness, why we found the darkness as a symbolism? It is because the darkness of the night when the family arrives in Kabuya symbolizes the unknown and the narrator's fear of being unnoticed and for forgotten in their new town. It represents the narrator's desire to be seen and acknowledged by others. And then the light, Eliza's hope to arrive in Kabuya before dark, symbolizes her longing, her, her longing for visibility and acceptance in the new community. And it represents her yearning for connection and friendship. So, di ba ganina kay Murag, gadali-dali bito siya, like, gusto siya makaabot sa ilahang new town, which is Kabuyao, which is ang Kabuyao. Ilan sila makadali dito para manotice siya sa mga tao. Ma-notice bito, ma-welcome bito sila, like, na, naaday bagong balhin, ana. So, for the salad, I mean, for, for salad, um, Eliza's friend from Tayog symbolizes the narrator's past and the innocence of childhood. Salad's presence in the story represents the narrator's longing for the familiarity and pain of leaving behind loved ones. And then for the growing breast, um, the narrator's growing breast symbolizes her transition to womanhood and the physical changes she experiencing. And then it represents her confusion and insecurity about her changing identity. So, she thinks no na kanang kung sana ni, like, um, she is ignorant, like, dili siya aware bitaw sa transition as a woman. Wala, wala siya, dili siya aware, ana. And then for the bamboo bridge, the swinging bamboo bridge leading to the outer toilet symbolizes the narrator's sense of adventure and freedom in her new surroundings. It represents her will willingness to embrace new experiences and adapt to new, her new environment. And then Mr. Gabriel, Eliza's teacher, symbolizes the, uh, um, I mean, symbolizes her first experience of love and desire his presence in the story represents the narrator's awakening love to her i mean awakening to her emotions and complexities of romantic love and then for eliza's wound the wound on the on the narrator's leg symbolizes her vulner, uh, vulnerability and her desire for care and represents the narrator's awakening it represents her longing for someone to take care of her and understand her pain and then the wind Lastly, uh, the sound of the wind at the end of the story which symbolizes the narrator's despair and emotional turmoil. It represents her sense of loss and confusion as she runs back home, leaving behind her unrequited love for Mr. Gabriel. And then for the point of view, um, the story was written in a first point of view. Like we, um, we all know that I mean the passage is all about the first person of view, right? And then for the question for discussion, um, what was the trap means in the story of Kirima Pulutan? So, unsa di ang trap? Unsi nga nung trap man, the trap ang gitaytol ni Miss Kirima Pulutan sa iyang story, sa katuna story. Like, why the trap? Uh, and then, how does Elisa's move to Kabuyo impact her sense of belonging and identity? So, unsa may, kana, unsa may in, in, naka-impact atong pag-move ni, ni Elisa sa Kabuyo? Unsa may naka-impact? Ang anong, nanong na-impact man, in, I mean, nanong na apektuhan man ang iyahang belonging and identity. And then, in what ways does Mr. Gabriel contribute to the protagonist's journey of self-discovery? And what are the consequences of their relationship? 
So, unsa may unsa may na ambag ni ni Mr. Gabriel sa life ni sa life ni Elisa as as she uh, as she transition uh, into womanhood. Unsa may na ambag niya? And lastly, just like Elisa, we all encounter puberty. When you were in your puberty stage, what were the things that is hard for you to adjust? So, unsa may na what are the things that for you? Galisud kag adjust bitaw. Galisud kag adjust ani na butang. For me, it's the it's the menstruation. It's the menstruation that I I find difficult to adjust because it's coming every month. It will come and go like that. No, mao na ang nagdisud kag adjust bitaw. Like I nagdisud pa ko og dawat bitaw sa kung soft na every month na ako magbayt ng napkin like that. And then. So what is the trap the eye? So based the story and as for me, kay firstly, feeling ni Elisa na na trap siya sa ihang puberty stage because she wanted kanang be comforted but wala siya nakakuha ana even kay Miss Ramos nga pareha sila girl, di ba? Feeling niya she is trapped kay kanang na suffer siya sa ihang gibati, sa ihang changes, sa ihang nawas, mar na suffocate siya. And then second, na trap siya in a way na she is transported sa place of the unknown for her. Kanang new environment, new people, new siguro na not different ko ang kanang different culture, but the the siguro na ay some differences of the values and beliefs. Kay mo na kanang na trap siya ato. Kanang feeling niya kay dili siya belong ato na 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 place. Mm -hmm. that, that there are a lot of kanang adjustments sa iya an, not just sa iyahang self, but also sa iyahang um, environment. So, ang iyahang ko ano na feel is that na I conflict, no, na I conflict sa iyang self, which is man versus man, and man versus the society. No, na iyang na feel. That's it. That's everything. So, uh, um, this is uh, Joanne May Bino together with my uh, co-partner, which is Marvel Tumanda. And if ever you have um, questions, um, you can comment down below so that we can um, answer the questions that you are that you found that you find um, difficult. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Bye.